Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It was almost Christmas back in 1974 and four garbage collectors were working picking up rubbish bins along the Avenue Marginie in Paris. As they neared the Alisi Palace, their truck was suddenly stopped by a policeman. The men wondered what they'd done wrong. But to their surprise, they were informed that the president, Valerie Giscard d'Estaing, wanted to have breakfast with them. So they were escorted before the French president to enjoy breakfast at the palace. He then gave each man a Christmas present of a turkey and a bottle of champagne and wished them an enjoyable day. Maybe he had seen these men from his window as they did their early morning work and it occurred to him that he could surprise them in this way. So he interrupted their routine with this gesture of kindness. In a more profound way, God interrupted the world's routine and impacted mankind for all ages with the gift of his own beloved son. As the president was moved by seeing these garbage men, God was infinitely moved with compassion at the plight of humanity. But he does something more than just invite us into his palace and send us home with a gift. To those who will receive him, he will come to live inside them. And that's the meaning of Christmas. Emmanuel, God with us. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. And thank you for joining us for this special Christmas week edition of Set Free with Ken Legg and Phil's my name. And this week, the wonder of Christmas. It's a great little story you told us there, Ken, about the French president and those four garbos. I I guess (laughs) you could say God has done something far greater for us by sending his own son at that first Christmas so that we might be reconciled with him. Yeah, that's right, Phil. And it reminds me of one of the names that's given to Jesus that we don't actually hear much about. And that is, he's called the Consolation of Israel. Now, we read about that in Luke chapter 2, uh, that there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And then it says that the Holy Spirit was upon him. So Simeon was waiting for the consolation of Israel. That word consolation is the Greek word paraklesis. And it's the act of comforting those who are in grief. Now, of course, man's greatest problem is our disconnectedness from God because of sin. Only Jesus can give true consolation because only he can say, be of good cheer, your sins Mm. are forgiven. Now, that is consolation. It's not the end of all our problems, but it's the answer to the root of our problems. Mm. It's real comfort, isn't it? That's right, and comfort is not just happiness. You know, people can be happy without God, but that's not real consolation. Uh, do you remember, Phil, in, in the Beatitudes, Jesus said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Mm-hmm. Now, what was he referring to? I, I believe that he was saying, Blessed are those who see their sin, their need of a Savior. They mourn because you know they're lost, uh, and they, they reach out to God in, in, that, in that state of need. They will be comforted. He will comfort them, yeah. Absolutely. So Simeon took this little baby, Jesus, in his arms and he blessed God and he blessed them, actually the parents, and says, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel. Uh, You know, the fall in the sense that you've got to go down before you can come up. You've got to realize you're a sinner, bow before him Mm. in in, in repentance and and faith before God will raise you up. I don't know if you've been to the Middle East, but... um, the, the, it's interesting, the Church of Nativity in Bethlehem, it's got a very small door. You do have to stoop in order to go in. And I understand that that's, that's deliberate so that we, we're reminded that it's, it's in bowing before God with our need that we, we find his salvation. Mm. You know, I love the faith of this man, Simeon, because uh, mm. you just read out to us there that you know, he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Yeah, these were actually difficult and dark times in Israel. Um, they were, of course, an occupied country. The Romans had occupied them. Uh, they'd lost their independence. The king that was over them was very cruel, Herod. And there was no prophetic voice for 400 years, you know, 400 gap between, a uh, year gap between the Old Testament and the New Testament, of course. But it was in the midst of that darkness that there were a few true believers who were looking for the promised Messiah. You remember, like, for example, it says about Joseph of Arimathea that he waited for the kingdom of God. Now, there were there were some real believers like that dotted around the land that were believing that Messiah was going to come. They held on to the promises of God, and Simeon was one of those men. The Bible says that he was just 
and devout because he waited for the consolation of Israel. It's an interesting term, isn't it, though, because we don't hear a lot of the consolation of Israel, the, that name for Jesus. Mm. What do you think is actually meant by that term, Ken? What, what is it conveying to us? Well, as I said earlier on, the word consolation actually means comfort. Now, Jesus is the comfort and the Holy Spirit is the comforter. Okay, so um, you know, a lot of people keep saying that you know the Holy Spirit has come to convict us of our sin. Mm. No, actually the Bible says that he, he will convict the world of sin. So before we come to Christ, he's the one that convicts us of our sin. But then when we have come to Christ, he comforts us Yes, because Jesus is the comfort and, and he's dealt with our sins. You remember Isaiah the prophet said, comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Clearly the message of Christmas is one of good news, though, one of comfort and not alarm. As the angel said to the shepherds, you know, fear not, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Yeah, and that's the meaning of the word gospel, good news. It doesn't deliver us over to fear, uh, but it deliver, delivers us from fear. The, the concept the Jews had of the coming Messiah is that they expected him to judge the heathen. Well, John says God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So God doesn't look for an excuse to condemn people. It's the opposite. He's found a way to save them. And that's what Christmas is all about. You remember Paul said to Timothy, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Yeah, what a great verse. Do you think there's something God wants us to learn from the fact that there were people like Simeon and Anna, the wise men, the shepherds, uh, and others who were aware at the time of Jesus' birth that there was something amazing happening? Yeah, I do actually, Phil. If you, in fact, if you notice that um, we read in the Scriptures that Simeon came into the temple by the Spirit, it says, by the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit revealed to him that he wouldn't actually see death until he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now remember, the, the Spirit is the comforter, and uh, he was upon Simeon to bear witness to him that Jesus was the Christ. He was the Messiah. He was the comfort mm -hmm. that was promised to the world. So the Holy Spirit, we could say, prepares a person to receive Jesus by stirring up a longing for this consolation, this, this relief, if you like, this uh, wonderful comfort to come to our lives. And uh, that comes, of course, by believing in Jesus. But the Holy Spirit is the one who prepares us for that. And so really what you're saying here is the Holy Spirit prepared Simeon so he would know that this baby was going to be, me, be the Messiah and to go to the temple. Yeah, it's beautiful, Phil, just to see the way the Holy Spirit worked in Simeon and he went in obedience. And the Bible says that he actually took this little baby up in his arms and he blessed him. He says, Lord, now you're going to let your servant depart in peace according to your word. Then he says this, For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. So God just gave him this revelation that, hey, this little baby would be not only his own personal saviour, mm -hmm. but he would be the Messiah of the Jews, but also the saviour of, of the world. And I just love that. And, of course, the Holy Spirit, who is the comforter, is the one who prepares us. Now, let me just say a couple of things about that as we finish up today, Phil. First of all, there may be some people listening to our program today who are not Christians, but they know that God has been stirring up their hearts and drawing them to himself. In fact, the very reason that they're listening to this program is because God is drawing them. And I would just say to those people, put your trust in Jesus today. Open up your heart and receive him. Now, to those of us that also know Jesus, I would say in a similar way that God prepared his people for the first coming of Jesus, and, and there were certain ones that were in tune and they knew that these times had come. Mm -hmm. In a similar way, you know, many of God's people today know that we're living on the threshold of his second coming. And, and, and it's exciting, I believe, to be the privileged generation that is going to see Jesus come back to this world again. It's a special look at the wonder of Christmas this week and we'll continue our conversation tomorrow. Until then, remember, you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg and details about Ken's ministry, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au. 
Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au. 